So I've tested both the Hobie Compass and the Hobie Outback and 1v1, we're gonna go through which one is the best value for money. We'll also go through the two sneaky changes that Hobie have made to their 2022 lineup. So let's get into it. Over the last few years on this channel, we have reviewed a bunch of kayaks. And I reckon that these two kayaks are, in my opinion, the number one and two kayaks on the market. Honestly, I used to be all about that Pro Angler. I think I've owned six of them now, from that classic one to the MD 180, all the way through to a couple of the 360s. The truth is, I don't think the Pro Angler has as much to offer as what I thought it did. 100% I'm moving away from it. And in 2022, one of these two kayaks will be my tournament boat. So we'll go into the side-by-sides of both of those products and we'll go into the only two changes across the entire Hobie kayak range for 2022. Remember though, smashing that like button down below does help this channel grow and it really does assist the video in some growth. So let's start with the price. The Hobie Compass is a little bit cheaper than the Hobie Outback, coming in just shy of 4,000 Australian dollars or 2,600 US dollars. The Outback is a little bit more expensive at 5,290 or 3,450 US. I guess the question we're gonna ask today is whether paying that extra amount to buy that Outback is actually worth it. And if you ask Hobie, it is because they think that Outback is the most popular kayak or the most popular selling kayak in the world. I'm a little skeptical on that, but that's what we're gonna check out. If you look at the specs of the kayaks, both have the same seating capacity limit of 275 pound or 124 kilo, and both sit in that perfect 12 foot range with that Outback being ever so slightly longer at 12 foot nine. Realistically, there's not a huge difference, but the Outback does weigh 16 pound or seven and a half kilo more than the compass. So if you really struck up on weight, that might actually be a consideration for you. Now straight out of the store, the Hobie Outback actually has more features than the compass. And if we have a look at the graphic, that is not hard to see. The Hobie Outback has got this awesome internal storage area at the front, as well as rectangular hatches instead of circular ones, which are generally larger. And you've got this advanced side mounting system here, which is basically the best in the business. Another big feature that the Outback does have is dual steering on both sides. The Compass does not have that. It's only got the steering on the left-hand side. So that might be a little bit limiting if you're interested in being able to steer your kayak from both sides. In terms of propulsion and Mirage Drive, the biggest difference between the stock standard models is that on the Hobie Outback side you actually get the turbo fin Mirage drive as standard. You can pay an extra $200 to get a camo color but I reckon that's a bit of a rort and not worth the money. However on the Hobie Compass side the standard drive is actually the standard fin which is a shorter one than the upgraded turbo fin. Now you can pay an extra $200 to get that Hobie Compass in a turbo fin if you purchase the camo. And in that space, I do think that extra upgrade, that 200 bucks there to pimp out the kayak a little bit more is definitely worth it. You do that and you'll end up with two kayaks that are very similar in performance. And we'll talk about how they perform on the water in a moment. I think the biggest change between both of these kayaks and the biggest point of difference is actually the Hobie Compass seat that is new in 2022. The seat has been changed from a Hobie Compass specific seat to a Hobie Passport seat, which is a much cheaper range to the Hobie brand. And you can see Hobie have been a little bit cheeky about this. They've updated their graphics online to represent the changes without really any major announcement. Of course, that's gotta make people a little bit skeptical about whether internally Hobie think this is an upgrade to their own product or not, but there already has been a little bit of negative commentary online about the change. So I think the truth is though, that old seat for the old Compass had two major problems that I hope are solved with this new seat. The first major issue with the old Compass seat was that the netting would eventually slacken up and start to bow at the rear and underneath. That bowing meant that your back would eventually collapse on that crossbar at the back and get really quite uncomfortable when you're on the water. And the second problem was that the seat was too low and you couldn't fit any tackle boxes or anything underneath it. If eventually you did get a tackle box underneath, it also meant that when you'd sit on it, you would bow and then you'd end up sitting or your backside would sit on that thing that you'd placed underneath it. There just wasn't enough gap. And the only real solution on the market to that were the Burley Pro seat risers that we've talked about previously on this channel. I am hoping that in 2022, that new seat has solved those two problems with the Hobie Compass. And it really could have been a good news story for Hobie if they had have announced that. But in some respects, unfortunately, the ship might have sailed. The second thing that you'll notice in the brand new 2022 product, and I guess it's changed over the last three months, you could argue it's technically a 2021 update, is the fact that the rod holders have changed across the entire range to now screw in, 
post-production rod holders. Those rod holders typically used to be a weak point and they were never really at the right angle to hold rods for trolling. They were always just a little bit of an awkward angle. I think these guys are much better. Now on the water, whilst I did say these kayaks were around about the same size, the big difference in the shape between both of them is definitely seen in the bow or nose of the boat. The outback is generally wider and rounded versus the compass, which is a little bit more sharp. That sharp nose on the compass means the kayak handles waves and weather and wind better than the outback. And it diverts a lot of the water away from the angler. It does, however, ride on top of the swell a little bit more and you do pivot ever so slightly more than you do in the outback. Now, that isn't to say that the Hobie outback does not perform well because I just spent two weeks offshore in New Zealand and fishing with the outback, but it was also excellent in those conditions. Now, if you're the type of person that wants to stand up and sight cast in your kayak, I've always felt that the outback is much better for that over the compass. And the tell here should be that the compass doesn't actually have any foot pads for you to stand up in or doesn't come with any straight out of the store. You certainly can stand up in it, but the outback does have that over the compass. In terms of speeds, remember the compass has that pointed nose and is a little bit more maneuverable than the outback when you put them next to each other. Realistically, it's not by much and it's probably not a factor that I would choose one over the other four. Lastly on the water in terms of comforts, if you are a larger or taller person, you will find the Hobie Compass better suited for you. It has a larger seat and the relationship between the pedals up the front and the seat down the back are a little bit nicer. It's not a new thing and that's not to say if you're a smaller person, you should go the Outback. If you're a smaller person, go either or. But if you're a larger person, you definitely want to consider the Compass over the Outback. As we mentioned before, the Outback in stock mode straight out of the shop is feature rich and is really the best out of the game or the best in the game when it comes to a stock standard kayak. The thing I didn't mention as well and I should include is the retractable Guardian mount that is underneath so that if you do hit any obstacles or whilst you're launching, you can pull your transducer for your graph or sound up into the hull and that'll prevent impact damage if you are going to hit something. For the compass to be complete though and compete in the same realm, you do need to spend a little bit of money pimping the compass out. In my opinion, 100%, the first thing you need to do is buy a rectangular hatch from Hobie and then replace the old circular hatch with this new one. You'll then take the old circular hatch, install it up the front, and this installation is actually one that Hobie expect you to do, and you can see that the mold cutout is ready to go. What it will do is open up that nose area for storage, and you'll have something that is on par with the Hobie Outback. The other thing that you'll need on your compass that you might get away with not having on your Outback, although I wouldn't recommend it, is a transducer cover. Now remember the transducer plate on the bottom of the compass is fixed. So if you're going to put a sounder or graph or transducer on the bottom there, you want something to protect it in case you do accidentally hit some rocks or trees or stumps. If you do those couple of upgrades on the compass, I do think that it becomes on par with the Outback. But where are we with price? So the stock price for the Outback comes in at $5,290 plus a $59 charge for the transducer, which gives you a total amount of $53.49 Australian. Whilst on the other hand, you're gonna start with the Compass base price, then you're gonna add the extra $200 for the upgraded turbo fins. Then we're talking the rectangular hatch, and then finally the transducer cover. And finally, you can see that that still comes in about $900 cheaper than the Hobie Outback. Now to wrap this up, I do think 100% without a doubt, the Hobie Compass is a better value for money kayak than the Outback. Sure, there might be some subtle differences, but if you don't mind the idea of only one steering handle instead of two, that new seat that's technically unproven yet, and we're still to see whether that is a good value seat or not, then the Hobie Compass is definitely for you. I know personally, I'd rather spend that extra $900 on some fishing gear or some tackle. On the other hand, if you're the type of person that likes to pull something from the shelf that is just 100% ready to go, that doesn't need any editing, that you'll be very happy with, and you're happy paying the extra 20% for it, well then, the Outback is going to be suited for you. Remember as well, it does handle a little bit better if you're planning to stand up and fish, but they are both premium Hobie kayaks and both luxury, awesome leisure machines. Like I said at the beginning, my number one and my number two kayaks on the water. Remember, all the products that I have mentioned are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. I'll see you next week.